Hi, and welcome to my vlog presentation number two, Skill versus Capacity in Speed and Agility. Today's content will be looking at two athletes' issues in acceleration and agility due to either capacity or skill issues. For the first athlete in speed, we will be analyzing the head position, plantar flexion, ankle height, arm movement, and body position, and conclude what is the most likely underlying cause of this. In the first still picture, it is at the point where the back foot is about to leave contact with the ground. We can see that he stands up very early and takes his head up. We can also see that he does not aggressively pull his arms back, which will also be shown in the front, front view. In the second still picture, we can see that his back heel is high and that his front foot is slightly plantar flexed. In the final picture, it is right before contact of the ground with his left foot. Here you can see that he stands up even more, causing more of the force production to be vertically instead of horizontally, which would be more ideal. We can also see that his touchdown distance is fairly short. For us to determine if these are caused by skill or capacity issues, more assessment is needed. I therefore evaluated the squat, squat jump, counter movement jump, and hip range of motion test to assess if it could be caused by some capacity issue. The athlete's ability to do a fairly heavy squat of 140 kilos suggests that he has enough strength capacity to have a decently good form. We can also see that both the squat jump of 33.23 centimeters and a counter movement jump of 39.86 centimeters are fairly high, which indicates that the athlete's ability to produce force rapidly is pretty good. The final assessment done to determine if it could be caused by a capacity issue was looking at the range of motion in the hips. As we can see, the athlete has really good range of motion in the hips and indicates that this is not an issue. We therefore did a number of drills to get the athlete more comfortable in a more horizontal position. Drills like falling starts and laying starts was used. To try to better the form of the foot, we use the drill shown in the video, where the cue is to hit the cone with your toe and drag it with the floor. The athlete was given coaching cues to keep the head more down and pulling the arms more aggressively backwards to try to better the form in this area. As we can see in the video, the athlete has bettered its form slightly, indicating that the lack of experience and therefore a skill issue was the leading factors for the underperformance. For athlete 2, we'll be primarily analyzing the shoulder height plantar flexion, ankle height, and spine position. We can see in still picture one that the athlete has seemingly high shoulders and that he slightly plantar flexes his ankle. In still picture two, we can see that the athlete curves his spine and that his ankle in the back leg is fairly high. We can also see a more clear plantar flexion and that the athlete does not lift his knee very high. His right foot is at contact time nearly behind his center of mass, thus resulting in a touchdown distance that is not optimal. If this is due to skill issue for not having sufficient sprint training or due to a capacity issue is not possible to say without assessing. However, this could be a tool by the body used to try to elevate the time on the ground so that he could generate more force as qualities to produce force rapidly might be poor. In the final still picture, we can see that the athlete is fairly upright and that it does not triple extend in the legs too fully.
To assess if this was a capacity issue, I primarily used squat, squat jump, counter movement jump, and hip range of motion test. Athlete B has very little experience in the weight room and does not feel comfortable doing more than 60 kilos in his squats. In addition to this, with a jump height of 19.39 centimeters in his squat jump and 21.21 centimeters in encounter movement jumps, it seems intuitive that rate of force production and mass max force production is a limiting factor and contributes to the less optimal form shown previously. We can also see that the athlete's range of motion in the hips might limit him to drive that knee up and forward to create more force. For this athlete, capacity seems to be the main limiting factor. For athlete A, we performed the L test to assess the agility. We analyzed primarily the heel strike and the tightness of the turn. On the video, there are especially two things that occur. One is that when the athlete is deaccelerating, it is not with a firm heel strike. You can see on the still picture that it is in more in a neutral position instead of slightly dorsiflexed. He also has a large churn and is far away from the cone, as you can see in still picture 2 and 3. I therefore tested the athlete's ability to deaccelerate eccentrically by stepping down from a chair and laterally deaccelerating on a single leg. As it does not seem to be a strength issue, it could seem like the athlete is not too well known with the exercise. I therefore did another exercise where the cues was to stop as fast as possible inside a small area. The idea was to force the athlete into using the, his heel more to stop. As you can see in the video, he's he clearly stopping more efficient and with a heel strike, suggesting it was a skill issue. I therefore did the drill again, but this time with small gates to force the athlete into more narrow turns to be more uh, efficient. As we can see, the athlete has a lot tighter turn and this suggests that it was a skill issue. For athlete 2, we also used the L test to assess agility. I primarily analyzed the heel strike and looked at the difference in dominance for the legs of the athlete. Here we see athlete B performing the L test for agility. There's especially one thing that sticks out in the video. In both still pictures, we can see that the athlete is slowing down for the turn using his right foot. However, both times this happens in a fairly neutral position of the foot and not heel dominant, which would be a lot more rapid. This suggests that the athlete struggles to deaccelerate his speed in a sufficient manner. I therefore tested his ability to eccentrically decelerate by stepping down from a chair at 40 centimeters height. We can see right away that he struggles to keep his knees neutral which can indicate that he has weak glute stabilizing muscles. We can also see from the side that he has to go fairly low when decelerating his speed, which can indicate that he has low stiffness in hip, knee, and ankle. We can also see that his, he lands in a dorsiflex position, which can suggest weaker hamstrings. I therefore did a stopping test and cued him to try to stop as fast as possible in a small area at high speed. We can especially see that right foot struggling to heel strike when stopping, as this is a football player and his stance foot will be his left foot, this makes intuitive sense that he's stronger eccentrically on that foot. To summarize, on the left we can see issues for athlete 1 on acceleration. His main issues was that his head and upper body was too upright, he had a high ankle movement when pulling the leg forward and he did not aggressively pull his arms back. For agility, which we can see on the right, the main issue was that he did not heel strike to a big enough manner, and that he did not attack the corner with enough aggr aggressiveness, which caused the turns to be unnecessarily large. For athlete 2, we can see the main issues on the left for acceleration, which was plantar flexion, high ankles, and a flexed spine which seemed to be a result of low range of motion in the hip and strength in the lower body. For agility, the main issues was heel strike 
especially on the right foot, where he did not have sufficient eccentric strength on that side.